Did all that Can behind they... the scenes help you loosen up, Dan? All that? It does, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to try that next time. Um, it's been a, been a busy day. It's been a busy week. Oh, welcome to Let's Talk Trek. We are the UK's premier Sunday night Star Trek chat show. Um, other nights, there are better shows. I'll admit there are better shows out there on other nights. But on Sunday, we are the best. We might as well have a day. Are um, there better shows than us, Dan? Yes. Yes. I've not seen a show that does Star Trek better than we do. The Trekkie Girls. The Hawaiian shirts. The Trekkie Girls. Well, they're not they on do, at the moment, talk, are they? They talk too much about Star Trek, and they're not on a Sunday. Yeah, true that. True that. But they are very good. That's the trouble. They're girls. Well, they're, good. they're not on right now, so we beat them on that. Right. Although I'm still, they've been going for two years, and I'm still waiting for them to make a decision. Oh, and there's four of us, but there's only three of them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Which one of us is D'Artagnan, then? I think... Who's the youngest? Is it Carl or Dan? It's Dan. Dan. Dan is D'Artagnan. Oh. Dan Tanyan. That'll do me. Mm. I'll be the drunken priest, whichever one that Remember was. Remember the old Aramis? dog Tanyan? That was great. Oh, oh, it's, 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 coming it's, coming it's coming back. Summer. Is it? Dog Tanyan's yeah. coming back, yes. Oh, amazing. Can't and wait. The hounds. <laughs> Actually, there's something we can do when we all get together in a month or two's time. Yeah. We'll go and see Dog Tanyan. Right. Who have we got in? Megan. Hello, Megan. How are you? <laughs> Stefania Jaquanda. Hello. I pronounce your name correct. Christoph Leichlitner. Val, Hugh, and Hello, everyone. Ben Dobson. G'day, mate. All of you. <laughs> Steve uh, McCarthy's in as well. What ho, Steve? Uh, hey. Steve, Steve is one of our friends from over the way in America, and we'd just like to say a very big happy Independence Day to all of our American friends. Well, and it's Jewish a trade today, isn't it? Yes, I forgot. Yes. Um, so happy Independence Day to you guys, and we hope that you stay safe, however it is you're celebrating. So, um, right. Whichever well, the original 13 colonies you are in, enjoy. <laughs> so let's throw these comments up. Uh, what's that? Megan's stuck in isolation for five days, thanks oh, to Track no. and Trace. Oh. Well, there's your mistake. Don't don't have the app. Don't go licking COVID patients. Megan, I, I, I was under the impression that people in your line of work weren't actually allowed to have it on. Um, you're not allowed to have the Track and Trace app on. So perhaps you've, you've missed a trick there, my dear. Uh, right, so... <laughs> Besides, um, I mean, James may be able to clarify this, but I believe the notifications on the app are not legally binding for you to isolate. They are merely a suggestion. It's only if that Track and Trace contact you that you are legally obliged. To isolate. Yes, I, I think that is probably about right. However, the lack of enforcement across anything is such that uh, anything goes. <laughs> um, oh, good God. No, someone who cared wasn't listening. Right, let's continue. <laughs> um, so, firstly, I'd like to talk about Star Trek Voyager. Um, Ooh, I, I, can on, I can only believe that season... Seven was on terrestrial TV yesterday because all I could hear was "It's coming home, it's coming home." So I assume that Voyager has finally returned. Um, You're a bit behind there, Dan. So the difficulty we have here, dear viewer, is that none of these three follow the football as I do. Is, is um, that soccer? I, I follow the rugby football. football. So the uh, the England team are doing rather well in the Euros, which everyone else is very excited about. Um, there's absolutely not even a tenuous tie-in I can do to Star Trek. And this show is not about football, which is why I'm not wearing my England shirt. I'm not going, yeah, go England, go England, go England. Um, but uh, if you're watching from abroad, England are doing rather well. And I have to say, it's going to be hilarious if we win the Euros having just left Europe. <laughs> That's going to be like given that we came last in Eurovision again. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some law we have to hand it back. Um, right. So, yes, I mean, let's uh, have a think. Well, it's a big hello to the England team. We know you're watching. Absolutely. Yes, hello, Gareth and uh, Wayne Rooney and the rest of you. Is, is, have they still got car, boys? Keep it up. Have, have they still got David Beckham face? Playing? Yeah. David Beckham still he was well he was watching with his son. Yeah, is he? But he's a footballer. Surely, surely he should be on kicking the ball around. Uh, he, he does play actually um, occasionally. He plays 
in America where they, they as you said, they call it soccer. Um, but the clubs, it works very differently. They have franchises for clubs. So sometimes he'll literally put on his boots just to kick it about so people can see him. And that'd be it. It's a bit weird. Excellent. Right. And if you like the rest of us and you don't really like football and you prefer Star Trek, this is the show for you. If you do like football, you can watch along with football later as Richard watches the England game live on Wednesday at four or five o'clock. Is it, Richard? Yeah, we're going to do a, a Let's Talk Trek football watch along where you can watch me watching the football. <laughs> that would be absolutely oh, trolling. Golly. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so um, let's do cocktails first, and then we'll have a natural best moment bit. So that's probably the best way. Yeah. Uh, last week, we challenged James to make cocktails with ingredients that we all chose. This is going to be fun. Well, you swines, uh, you challenged me to make a cocktail using four specific ingredients, being whiskey, Midori, um, uh, pineapple. No, it wasn't pineapple. Um, Angostura bitters. Um, one other thing I can't remember. Bailey's. Bailey's. That's right. I have not been able to find a cocktail that requires these four ingredients, either as a whole or as part of a greater whole. So ah. I'm still working on it. You've but never I, been to Essex. <laughs> I think I will have something for you next week. So instead, I'm going to mix for you this evening the uh, Scotty Aldebaran. And uh, for the Scotty Aldebaran, you are going to need the following ingredients. Where's Is this an independent cocktail? No, it's not independent. Okay. We had a we had a vote on it and decided against it. So um, we will be using. I thought Cranky had decided that they were going to have another vote until they got the answer she wanted. <laughs> yes. We'll keep voting until we get it right. Um, uh, there we go. Right, yes. Yeah, so we are going to use the Midori uh, for this. We're going to need 60 millilitres of Midori. Gosh. Quite Just a bit while you're mixing, I'll, I'll pick up in the comment there. Christopher said, the Euro is a UEFA competition, not an EU competition. Not even Boris Johnson would dare... To cut off the UK from the football world, I, I'm afraid that you give Mr. Johnson a lot more credit there for understanding what it's about, there, Christoph. <laughs> I I know people personally who voted for Brexit because they didn't want England to play in the Euros. That's what we're dealing with. I know my sister was devastated when she thought we might not be in Eurovision. <laughs> yeah. And then equally confused when Australia were in it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the Eurovision is as a result of the uh, European Broadcasting Union, which is a totally different uh, European Union. Right, you're going to need 30 millilitres of Ferengi lime juice. And what do we know about Ferengi lime juice? It comes from Azerbaijan. It's moist. It does indeed. Right, the most dangerous element of this cocktail is this, uh, the uh, Cardassian egg stuff. What do they call it? Taspa? Taspa, yeah. Yeah, right. So hang on. 22.5 mils of egg white. Ooh. That sounds like Steady. one. Oh. I hate dealing with egg white. It's oh. no yolk. Ah. Oh, I've, ne I've never even, I've never even oh, touched an egg, egg white oh. or a yolk. What does it feel like? Is it sort of gunky? Yes. It looks it's gunky. like ectoplasm. Um... Do you see uh, when Alan Partridge was on uh, a month or two ago, they had an egg white cocktail. He went, don't drink that, it's raw. Right, so you'll need this. First of all, you give it what's called a dry shake, which is without ice. And then a wet shake in which you do deposit some ice in there. <laughs> a dry shake and a wet shake mean two completely different things to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, then we have some leakage going on there. Uh, <laughs> was that after the dry or the wet shake? It was after the wet shake, obviously. <laughs> then take one chilled uh, cocktail glass. <laughs> You're oh. going to get this from the Trekkie girls, do you? No dry oh, shake. <laughs> <sighs> and just for fun, 
Let's put some Ferengi lime in it as well, just to make it uh, tartar. <laughs> look at the colour, gentlemen. Look at that. If that so came out after a shake, I'd be very worried. Mm. Green. It looks like someone put, came at a flog, frog in a blender. Kill me. Oh, that's, that's quite nice. I like that. Uh, I wouldn't have more than one. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm going to give that um, three and a half Barrowman DVDs. <laughs> right. So, so my question is this. Can we, at the next official European Star Trek convention, um, and show masters if you are watching, which I know you are, um, we would like to host a panel where James does an entire two hours of just making cocktails. Um, oh, that could be so much fun, couldn't it? And the panel gets better and better the more that he's mm. made and samples. So, <laughs> which celebrity guests do you think are the, the most likely to come up and say, "Yeah, I'll try them all"? Uh, it's it's Connor, Connor Trinney, yeah. John Barrowman. Would it be Mr. Keating? Connor Trinney. We're not having Mr. Barrowman on our panel now. <laughs> I'd do Barrowman. <laughs> Well, perhaps you'd like to spend an evening with him. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to let's move on to some more features now. Um, should we do collectible, or should we move? Should we ask our question first? Oh, there's something I've not been briefed on. Okay, so I believe that we're giving that right. So, as was alluded to at the top of the show, um, James and Richard are venturing to the north in a, in about six weeks. Yes, um, I've bought a mosquito net. Right, so they're coming up to, to, to towards Manchester, um, and we are trying to think of places and things to do with them. So if you are from that neck of the woods, or you think of something that we should be doing together, put it in the comments, and we might just do it. Uh, we are going for dinner, we are going to be getting a little bit drunk, and we are going to the Imperial War Museum, where James is going to come dressed as the Brigadier from Doctor Who, just to, oh, confuse, yes, just to, confuse, just to confuse the staff. Um I, I, I'm, I'm, looking forward to visiting the, I'm looking forward to visiting the north, but I've, I've, I've had to put together a first aid kit for the expedition. It contains some Evian, um, in case we don't like the northern water. Um, it also has in there all kinds of wonderful things that I've picked up from Marks and Spencers, and some sunshine. So we should we should be okay. Marks and Spencers. You, you, you do realise that we have booths around here. We don't need Marks and Spencers. And uh, I, I, you're probably quite happy picking up your tea from Asda, but James and I require a Marks and Spencers. Sorry. You do realise you're coming to Cheshire, don't you, sir? Oh, you got a Waitrose. <laughs> Marks and Spencers. That's like, that's like a cheap Waitrose, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Richard, if we go by train, we'll stop at Fortnum and Mason and buy some tea. That's a good idea. Or oh, we can go to Harrogate mm. and buy some tea. Harrogate's got wonderful tea. Yes, go straight past us for an hour to get tea, then come back. <laughs> it's worth like it for the tea from is... Harrogate. Honestly, it's wonderful. Seems like an amazingly rubbish idea. Uh, well, hang on a moment. In the comments... Oh, God. Megan said we should pick up an infection on the way. Hang on. <laughs> It's a little bit out of Manchester, but you could always give zombie infections courthouse event a go. Um, I I have to confess, Megan, I've seen occasionally you post on Facebook about this, and this I think perhaps you should come on the show and explain it what it is. Because from your posts, I can never make out. I, I, do, do, do people dress up as zombies and chase you? Uh, Megan, you, you are not invited this week though, because you are socially isolated. You are keeping isolated, and we don't want to catch COVID. So. But is this is this if if this is the idea? If people dress up as zombies and chase you, and then you then have to run, um, I'd, I'm really not interested in it. Um, and you don't get to be a fat boy by running. So, you know, do, do you know um, if I want to see zombies, I just go to Morrison's in Margate. Oh, the the Asda. The Asda's the one. If you go to the Asda after nine o'clock on a weekday, oh my God, we've oh, been such an Elisa show. It's like The Walking Dead, seriously. <laughs> Moving on! <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> Hello, dear viewer. My name is Carl, and this is Collectible Corner. Um, Ew, Carl. 
Hey, oh, Carl. Um, Carl has not got a collectible for collectible corner this week because Carl has been busy being manager of pub and I've got I've got something taking whippets for walk and stuff like that. Um, whippet. Go, go on then, Richard. What you got? Got a pink knob. Yeah, moving on. Um, <laughs> I've got something too. Um, oh, Dan, could you, could you value this? Oh, oh dear, I've broken yeah. it. Oh, that's, that's um, not worth a lot anymore. This is a we're, ceramic. We're look look at ceramic. that, everyone. Oh, oh a Maylon Freighter. Oh, my <laughs> word. Look at it. Where did you pick that from? That's that beautiful. You can that. Look, it says on the bottom, look. Um, look there we are. <laughs> Maylon Freighter. Look, oh. oh are we going to go that we heard the sound of it breaking? Have you got there the... James, do you look have the, the special edition... Gold plated Malon freighter, or will we see that next week? We might see a gold plated Malon freighter at some point, but oh. yeah, this is what everybody wants. When we, when we have our friends on from e are they called Eagle Moss? What are they called now, Dan? Show Hero, show Hero Collector. Hero, we have our friends from, from Hero Collector. Um, this is what we want to ask them about. We want to ask them about the gold plated Malon freighter. Wow, look at that. Look at right, it coming at you. Let's do an actual. What, what it were? What's oh, it worth? <laughs> Ten and how much for my pink knob? <laughs> Come on, I spent more than that on eBay to get this little beauty. Come on, Carl. Oh. Right, have you got on. one, Carl? Let's show an actual collectible. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. This is the Star Trek Ahura bag. Now, it is, I believe, designed for the... the Designed not necessarily for as, as a backpack. It is it only got this type of thing. There's no strap oh, that comes over your shoulder. There's so no shoulder. It's no, there's no shoulder strap. It does back say on the back. There is a little thing that says Star Trek on the here. It is embossed. It's made yeah. of leather. We know a story about this, don't we, gentlemen? What's in your bag, Daniel? What is in your bag? <laughs> I let it sound, Lord Lucan's false teeth. That's what's in my bag. So, I wanted to demonstrate how large the aforementioned bag was. So, I thought the best option to show was uh, with my MacBook, <laughs> which fits quite nicely inside um, with some space. So, you could use it as a laptop bag, um, a fashionable bag for laptoping or things at a convention. Now, this bag is normally retailed at £30, which, as we know, Are in we Penny. Are seeing now? What's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind just, um, you know, Slinging it over your shoulder and walking from one side of the camera to the other, just so we can see it being modelled and see how it. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. it's a lovely thing. I can't deny it. Um, Val, if you're still watching, if you haven't given up yet, Val got one of these. She's really pleased with it, mm. and she showed me hers, her bag the other night. It looked, and it, it does look lovely. But the the what's in your bag, Daniel? Generally, what what would you? Carrying that, what you can, what you plan on using it for in your day to day uh, life? Because you, uh, will... so me. I've, I've, I've donated it to the lovely wife. So. Ah, that makes. So I was going to say, it looks like something I personally would carry my seventies um, porn star lingerie in. Mm. Okay, um, so let's have a look in the comments. Uh, Linda's in from Chicago. Megan's bought one too. Can I sent Megan the link for it. Anyway, so here it is. It should Other be. different characters, Dan. Can you get like Kirk and Spock and Scotty? No, and only a horror. Now, it it's a really not... lovely bag. I love the way they've gone for the proper 70s design. It like mm. car wash filled. It's just proper wonderful. Record. It does retail for £30, or at the moment it is on offer on the Zavi website for £9. Um, is it real cow or fake cow? <laughs> fake cow. Hmm. It, is, uh, it is not a backpack. It is a a bag bag, but it is on the Zavi UK website for nine pounds at the moment. Uh, now Val showed me her her flaps the other night. Um, there's a if you unzip. There's a one at the front you can unzip, and there's one at the back you can unzip. The there is, is. Yep. A holding point at the front. Yep. A zippy it's thing okay at the back. Yep. Yep. And inside, if you look where the zippy bit goes, it's got stars yep. inside. Ooh, pretty. And it really is a lovely thing. I have the, to say. the QVC Star Trek night used to be on the first Sunday of the month, didn't it? <laughs> and to make matters even more interesting, we have bought a few of these. So we're going to offer one as a game for when we do Stampity Stamp live on stage. 
Oh, oh, damn, damn. Ooh. It's on the website right now, and there is a matching Uhura journal hardcover. There is. How much is you that? Can put it in the bag. It's twelve ninety nine. It's significantly more than the bag, but you can have four of them for twenty quid, and therefore, you know, with your friends, you can chip in and spend five pounds each. Mm. Um, so, um, someone's just Linda oh, her, from Chicago with her bean. Mm. I said your wife will love it. Do you know what? I'm going to buy my wife this for Christmas, and I'm going to film her reaction as she opens it, and we'll put it live on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it could be we could do this as a new feature each week we could put a collectible inside the bag and the game could be with Carl what's in the bag and he it's out another mail on freighter yeah. <laughs> is it going to be the gold plated one this week James can you send me a link to that mail on freighter you found I'll, I'll... when, when, it, when, it, when is Hero Collect on coming on Dan or are they not now if they um, we are still in negotiations. Um, we have not yet pinned, pinned down a date um, due to work commitments, which are going to get increasingly harder for myself due to the fact that Nightlife is releasing very soon. So, um, yes. Yeah, right. I'm looking to still have a little mail on freighter for you, Richard. I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> I just love the way it looks a bit like a poo. <laughs> So yeah, so that, that's my collectible. Uh, get it now on the Zavi UK website for nine pounds while they've still got stock, because I imagine that there's not many left at nine quid. Um, right, are we on Twitter? Says Chris. Uh, Carl, are we on Twitter? Do we go live not on? Probably. Not quite. I'm still not. I've heard oh, it gosh. talked about a lot. But I'm still not certain what Twitter, Twitter is. Carl is in charge. The of website, right? They had the Wand Community uh, Wand Company Communicator out of stock. If you try and click yeah. it. That's yeah. why I was excited to see it was there when there you can't get them for love nor money. But yes, out of stock, not for sale anywhere. Why have you left? It's it there, just the though? the one company communicator that the Let's Talk Trek this technical one. department worked out how to fix if yours goes wrong. Mm. Yes, same one. Yeah. This, this is why you watch this show for these helpful hints. That one there at the end of my thumb. Yeah, listening. Well, the problem on my with track. it. If, in fact, if you've got any technical problem with any of your Star Trek gear, you should probably message the show because between the four of us, it'd be very unlikely if we were not able to fix it. I mean, just look at the wonderful job that James did fixing that mail on freighter. Mm. <laughs> James, how much is that? Was that standard 15 quid? I would not have spent 15 quid uh, on this. It would be worth twice as much, but I picked it up for a bargain of five English pounds. <laughs> so I, so I genuinely had a conversation with a friend of the show, Darren Jameson, who does uh, Star Trek blog. This is really good. And uh, I said to him, I, I love the Eagle Moss collect, sorry, Hero Collector collections, but in all seriousness, why are they like releasing a mail on freighter and <laughs> his answer was genuinely well where else can i get one <laughs> <laughs> the guy's got a point he's got me there there's, there's no answer to that is there there is nowhere else you could have gotten one um keep talking Right. Chris, uh, in the comments you say, have you seen the Bluetooth communicator links to your mobile phone? Assuming you don't mean yeah. this one, um, I believe you may mean the one that Dan's got, which is the badge. Yes. yes the Com badge. Um, I think they've, they've re-released it, haven't they? Yeah, the Com badge, that was another one we did a fix for on the show. Or if not, I fixed for someone that gave it to me. Yeah. yeah. We are working on that, Chris. Okay, uh, I would like to raise you on the mail on freighter issue. Um, yeah, I've been busy in Mason Towers this week. Um, right, have you got another cool. cloaked mail on freighter? No. <laughs> so what I've actually got is the the mail on Titanic, which you will recognise. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the little balls. Which by its increased podage, you know, this is this is the mail on Titanic uh, with detachable pod sections. It is Pride Month as well, isn't it? So, uh, you know, right on trend there. Ah. Yeah, now. Oh, my, my mail on parade has gone a bit limp. Um, 
And you said there was nothing Star Trek to talk about this week. Look, we've talked about more Star Trek than we've ever talked about before. Oh, that's and most yeah. of it centered around the Malon Freighter. <laughs> yeah. The Malon Freighter did at least appear in Star Trek. Mm. I tell you what, do you, do you think Rick Sternback watches this and goes, "What, my God, what did I do? What did I, what did I help create?" <laughs> <laughs> Bless. Right, oh, we'll so, have to Rick on. He's a good laugh. I like. He's Rick. a lovely mm. guy. He's all right. Right then, uh, Carl, shall we uh, do the stampity stamp? Well, let's do at least that bit of this feature. Oh. So you want the, we have uh, a stamp? You want the old stamp up. Okay. Produce uh, the stamp. There it is. So, Christoph, tell us why that is uh, Mr. Spock uh, in your own time, and uh, everyone else can have a guess. No, 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 that's obviously Beverly Crusher. I think that's Alexander City. Have we had Alexander City before? Well, we're, we're, we're not just on UK stamps anymore, are we? We're on international stamps. No, we're on worldwide international postage. I see Alan has gone for Mr. Hom, but then that's his answer every week. Mm. Nadim is our usual good Nadim guest. Nadim normally guest knows what's crusher. going on, but I'm not sure the chin warrants a crusher comment here. This is... Um, Jadzia. Um, Has anyone ever thought else ever thought that Jadzia would be a wicked name for a brand of vacuum cleaner? No, that's if, just you. Because, like, Dyson, who, Henry Hoover, um, Albert, and then Jadzia. I'd buy a Jadzia vacuum cleaner. Oh, Alan, please, please turn up to destination as a Malon freighter. <laughs> if, if you've got a Zorb ball and you paint it properly, you could do a um, Zindi, you know, the Zindi little pod ships mm. from Enterprise. You could just be one of those by yourself. I think that a good panel at the next destination Star Trek would be an arts and crafts panel where James shows us how to make a Malon freighter out of some papier-mâché and some balloons. I think that'd be amazing. And then I could produce one that I'd made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Alexander City. Well, okay, we'll, we'll, come back to this, we'll play some Blankety Blank, shall we? Do, we? do we have anyone who wants to play Blankety Blank this week? Oh, okay. We're doing Blankety Blank. I thought, I thought he was on... Blankety Blank was on furlough, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've prepared it. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> In that case, it's on flexible fellow. <laughs> Release. The should, should we should we perhaps do reverse blankety blank, whereby we put it? We'll be the contestants, and our viewers will be the the celebrities. I, I don't think this helps James's. He's prepared it speech. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I just don't know how we'd get that to work right now. I don't either. I was hoping someone cleverer than me would work that out. Um. Yeah, I mean, Christopher has pointed out Alan is still after the uh, Barrowman DVD. Well, I mean, Alan's been after like John Barrowman the for, for the Barrowman DVD. Alan has been after the John Barrowman evening for some time. <laughs> <laughs> Who hasn't been after an evening with Barrowman for some time? I mean, frankly, you know, I can't wait to be rid of it. So, someone please win it. You're gonna you're gonna get rid of it, and then you'll have a barrowman-sized hole in your life, James. You will. <laughs> How would you fill the void? Mo moving swiftly on, um, <laughs> on we have another contestant for blankety blank. <laughs> Is there anyone in the audience that would like to play blank plank this evening? Who wants to play Alan Window for the um, barrowman DVD? I'll play Come against Val. Val Hug, you're you're always lurking yeah, around. Why don't Val. you play? Well, well, Val Hughes. Val Hug, as she puts herself in the uh, comments. Hmm. <laughs> Anti Val, start playing. Yeah, come on, Val. <laughs> I'm going to be a Batman DVD on. If the right, here's the deadline. If the Barman DVD is not won by the first week of September. We are going to see how far we can frisbee it off the top of Jodrell Bank. Right. So it's Val versus Alan. Val versus Alan. All right. Val versus okay. Alan. Okay. Oh, we have a M. Wumu wants to play. Oh. 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 Wumu versus Val. 
I don't know. Does, does, does W Moo want to challenge Alan for the right to uh, go for the Barrowman DVD? I mean, let's face it, you're not going to win it, are you? <laughs> no one ever does. Alan's had, had so many attempts at this. I think I think Wumu. I think Wumu and Val identifies as a cartoon strawberry is going to play against Val. Hmm. Right. No, no, okay. They're, they're so, not from the club. They're, they're just salted. W Mu. Uh, are you familiar with Blankety Blank? Have you have you watched displaying Blankety Blank before? Would you like me to recap the rules? What I'll say just... you to eight men down? <laughs> <laughs> In short, I will give each contestant a phrase which has a blank or blanks in it. Um, the mm -hmm. panel will write down what they think should go into the blanks, and then I will ask you what your answer is, and we'll see if you match with any of the panel. We'll then do the same with the second contestant, uh, and the one with the most uh, successful matches goes through to the Super Match Game. And the Jacks are worth game, 10 apart from one-eyed Jacks, which are wild cards. I'll tell you what, if this had been around in, in the old days... America wouldn't have gone independent. They'd have stayed around for this feature. They certainly would I would have. like to offer my pink knob as a prize tonight. Um, oh, so with Mr. Barrowman. Two spare. So. All right, I'll, tell, I'll tell you they what. Come with all the fittings. So, got... so there, there are three prizes available at the moment. I have the DVD, the yo-yo, and the pencil. Would you like to substitute your pink knob for one of those prizes? Abs, I've got... They came, I only needed four, and they came in a pack of six. So I've actually got two spare pink knobs. I'm a Klingon. All right, would you, which should we swap it for the yo-yo or the pencil? Oh my god! Probably the pencil. All right, okay, right. So, W Moo, we're going to start with you. Here comes your question. Listen carefully. Um, let me see. Um, instead of tea, Earl Grey hot, Picard was shocked when the replicator served him blank. Hang on, wait. Who's this for? This is for W Moo from Wumu. So say it again. Instead of tea, Earl Grey hot, Picard was shocked when the replicator served him blank. So, W. Moo, uh, when you're ready, write in the comments what your answer is, what goes in that blank, and we'll see if you match with any of the panel who are busily scribing their answers. Panel look like they're ready. Do we have an answer from the contestant? Have we got the blankety blank music to fill in this void while we're waiting for <laughs> W Moo's answer? Blankety blank, blankety blank, boom, boom, blankety blank, blankety blank, boom, boom, blankety blank. New feature blank. needed, new feature needed, boom, boom, boom. Sorry, what? <laughs> oh, here, white. White. Oh, yeah, okay, right, Dan. Dan, what have you got? Ronan's Ooh. candle. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be a shock. That's no match there. Um, Carl? I went for Mr. O'Brien's coffee, Jamaican blend, double strong, double sweet. Oh, that's no match there. Sir Richard? I went for coffee, and also in case President Trump is watching, Kwerve. <laughs> right, okay, so no matches there, W moves. So, right, Hard it's an open goal for Val. So, Auntie Val, here comes your, uh, here comes your question. Are Listen you ready? Listen carefully, Val. <laughs> Listen very carefully. Commander, tell me about your blanks. Can you say that again? Commander. Tell me about your blanks. This is an actual quote from TNG. Hmm. Struggling with that one. <laughs> You're going to love it when I tell you what the original answer was. Whenever you're ready, Val. Panel already? I think I think I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we've got music. Oh, 
<laughs> David Thompson's gone for exactly the same answer, and what they did put an eye raised. Ah, anti Val though. Well, the absences. absences, Commander. Tell me about your absences, right, uh, Dan? What do you have? Parents. Parents. Oh, it's no match, uh, Carl. Ambition. Ambitions. Ambition sounds Ambition. a bit like absences. Tell me about your absence. Because some of the letters are the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Richard? I have torpedoes on. <laughs> torpedoes. This is from the TNG episode where someone says to Riker, Commander, tell me about your sexual organs. Oh, Alan, was. Alan was straight in there with his sexual organs. Oh, he would have won the Barrowman DVD. He would have won oh, it. Right. Barrowman DVD right. would have been his. Right. Well, well, Val, Val, because, because Val got half a point, generously <laughs> awarded, Val goes forward to the Super <laughs> game. Hard luck, Wu Tang Clan. Oh, God, is this so, just Val, going? Val, listen carefully. This is what you could win. So. <laughs> We're going, to, we're going to have the legend. I have three answers before me, which are worth either 50, 100, or 150 blanks. I've already said If no, you get the not. answer which has 50 blanks, Val, you will win uh, Richard's Pink Knob. Get him, Pink Knob. There it is. Okay. Comes with all the fittings. If you get the 100 blank answer, you will win the Riker's Beard Yo Yo. And if you get 150 blanks, you will win. The Barrowman DVD. An hour okay, are you ready? Here hours. comes the legend. So just to remind you, uh, I'll ask the panel first to give me an answer. That's just for advisory purposes only. You're not obliged to accept it. You can take any of their answers or just give me your own. So here it comes. Launch blank. Launch Blank. Dan, what have you got? Launch. Launch blank. Launch the Delta Flyer. Okay. Carl? Probe. 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 Sir Richard? Torpedoes. Launch torpedoes. And I see we've got uh, Megan's offered sequence as well in the comments. So, Val, let, let's have your answer and see uh, see what you've got. Launch blank, Val. What are you going to say? You don't have to match with us, Val. This is purely whatever James has conjured up in his crazy What's on the paper that matters? Launch probe. I like launch that. Next Christoph. feature. Launch. I like probe. 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 So Val's just given us an emoji. Come on. Come on just torpedoes. Torpedo. Right. Okay. Torpedoes. So here we go. Launch. For 50 blanks, the answer was shuttle. shuttle. Yeah. Mm. For 100 blanks, the answer was Probe. Oh, and for the John Barrowman DVD. The Barrowman DVD. Do we have torpedoes? For 150 length. Brain got really pineapple. Launch. Scout. <laughs> <laughs> Launch Scouter. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Glad this feature done with. Moving on. Let's go back to the stats. <laughs> That was brilliant. <laughs> Hard luck, Val. Better luck next time. Oh, right. <laughs> the DVD still available. <laughs> oh, God. So, can we reveal the stamp? Who is the stamp? <sighs> it's got to be sitting. <laughs> it's like, like being sober rather too quickly. Oh, I'm getting sober. Oh, no. Oh, it's Spock. It was, of course, Spock. Canadian I said Spock. It sounds a bit like Spock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right, and on that massive disappointment, let's move on to our next feature.
Okay, hey, everyone, okay. So today's briefing is gonna be a sharp one. Um, the Borg invasion still isn't happening, okay? There's no Borg threat and I'm fed up of talking to you guys and I just want a cup of coffee. Um, the, uh, apparently I'm not even president anymore and I don't care. How do you, Megan Reynolds, how do you explain the implants, sir? Okay, <laughs> you probably should ask sir about that, whoever that is. I'm not sure who you're talking to. Um, it's not me. Mr. President, a question, please. Uh, Tricky Sky Media Group. Um, do you have an opinion on One Night with John Bar Barrowman? Okay, so I've heard of Mr. Barrowman, and he's got a lot of interesting things to say. He's got a lot of points to make. Um, he better not make them in in my state, or we'll, we'll probably, you know, march on Capitol Hill or something. Yeah. And do you have a, a message for today, which is Independence Day for your, your fellow Americans? Yeah, I mean, t today's, uh, as I like to call it, um, Trump Day. Other people like to call it Independence Day, but... Um, Really, I have to say that, you know, th this segment has run its course. <laughs>
They really can't. I mean, don't get me wrong. In in the Star Trek reboot, you had it was difficult with Carl Urban and, and everyone there. But I mean, how, how is how was he Scotty at all in any way, shape, or he can't act? He's not a good actor. It's like Quentin Tarantino said. He wrote films and scripts because he wanted to get himself into films, but he always limited himself to a cameo because he knew he couldn't actually act. This idiot should do the same. Uh, perhaps if he concentrated more on his writing and less on attempting to act, he might churn out something worth watching. But if you start to be honest and to go by, then absolutely not. You know, just stay out of it, mate. Sunday Don't night, you know, Richard. Tell us what you really think. Sunday night, you're tuning into another episode of Richard Rants. Don't hold back. <laughs> well, you, it's just. Tr- I'm sorry, but if uh, you watch what's that woeful film he did, The End of the World? I never thought I would see a film where Martin Freeman was not the worst actor, but <laughs> Simon Pegg managed to do it. I've got to tell you, I quite liked The World's End because it reminded me very much of a number of people that I know. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Aha! Oh, so that's uh, that's the Klingon bird of prey and the Golden Gate Bridge mm. in 1987 for the voyage home. What what's the story here? It is, and would you say that the uh, scaling on that Klingon bird of prey in relationship to the Golden Gate Bridge is accurate? No, not for the one that's in the film. But the, the funny thing is, if you have the Haynes manual for the Klingon bird of prey, you find that there's a whole load of them that all look exactly the same, but the scales vary massively. And that's how they explain the disparity. I've got an interesting the... anecdote about that's the... the one, Carl. Turn to the page with the scales on. Give me a moment. So my my Eagle Moss, as we now... The artist that used to be known as Eagle Moss, we now call Hero Collector. Um, the, the bird of prey they churned out is beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. It's a really, really good model. Mine was genuinely damaged in an earthquake. My 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 um, port disruptor got damaged in an earthquake. Yeah, but it's no Malon freighter, is it, Dan? I mean, it's no. It. No. <laughs> this one, Richard. It is. It's beautiful. I've got the same. But my port my port one um, disruptor came off in an earthquake. There was an earthquake in Thanet uh, about eight years ago now, and uh, my wife tried to wake me up and said, "There's there's an earthquake," and I went, "Shut up, you silly! I'm trying to sleep." There's, Found it, it's not an earthquake. Woke up in the morning, went upstairs, and found my disruptor had snapped off because it had fallen off its thing because of the earthquake. Mine's just I've got an stuff. earthquake damaged bird of prey. Did you claim on your earthquake insurance? Ah, there you are. <laughs> yes, there we are. Look at that. So that's it in scale with another bird of prey. Yeah, so you got the, the B-Rel class and the Cabot class. The B-Rel is the one that's in Star Trek Four, I believe. Beautiful ship. Be- wonderful design and really, by Hero Collector, a stunning model. It's no mail on freighter, granted, but um, it's a stunning model all the same. It, it's got a convenient bay large enough for two humpback whales as well. Mm. Just about. Yeah. Right, so anyway, the reason that this is in the news and the reason I've got this image... Um, Hallmark are releasing a special edition um, Christmas ornament, which is going to be a Comic Con exclusive. Carl, next slide, please. Oh, something we have to go to San Francisco or something to get it. Ooh. Ah. Or San Diego. Essentially, what they've done is they've bought a load of the Hero Collector ones. They've stuck a eyelet in the middle of it and stuck a bit of ribbon on it and now they're going to knock them out of the paint the paint job is nowhere near as good as the hero it's not as good as it the hero collector one's far superior in detail i think it's really nice that that the hero collector one was obviously they thought we we're going to do this one right we're going to spend the front the front of it looks like someone started describing a cylon and then decided to change their mind halfway up and decided actually we're going to make it into a klingon bed of prey Do you know the, oh. the cloaking device, isn't it? The red round thing. Yeah. It looks like you know the Cylon fighters in the yeah. Battlestar reboot. It looks like that. Drat it, James. I don't know you're wearing your first night. Mine's at the dry cleaners. <laughs> right, Carl, next slide, please. Yeah, we both wore fezes, Richard. Let's be honest. Oh, ah, uh, I know, I know this. Are. I know this. I know this. This is some news that I read. Ah. So, um, Ethan Phillips, apparently, they did actually shoot 
the scene where um, Neenix broke up with Kess. Yeah. Yes. They did. The, it, it was shot, but they never, obviously, um, showed it. Yeah, they, they never incorporated it into an episode or anything for it to happen. Which I remember. I genuinely do remember when I was watching Voyage when it first came out, being a bit gazumped when they had that random episode where she was copping off with that alien. It's like, well, Neelix had the ump. Oh, they're broken up. Oh, well, that never kind of transpired. The, the film was shot, but it was never shown. I'm presuming, and no disrespect to all to Ethan Phillips, because I do enjoy him and I do enjoy Neelix, um, the scene didn't come off well, and that's why it was cut. Uh, they they didn't, didn't deliver. Um, but I'd love it if they could find it and restore it. As a fan, I'd love to see it. I am maybe part of that uh, Voyager documentary. It was apparently filmed in the Science Lab set, which wasn't used very often. Um, that's why it stuck in Ethan's mind. Um, it's a good question, actually. Someone's mentioned the Voyager documentary. Have we heard anything more about that? They they raised bucket loads of money to make it. We're, we're waiting for our invite still. Mm. Uh, um, they, they have started to film it. Um, there has been some bits and pieces. We will ask our friend Anne-Marie, because she knows some people that know some people that are involved with it. So we will make, ask our well, friend I'm, I'm, We still haven't been contacted, as far as I'm aware, have we, to, to put our... In for it, I think it's imminent though, isn't it? It's got to be imminent. It's got, sure. it's got to be soon because mm. they're, they're probably wrapping shooting soon. Maybe yeah. we could do like subtitles for the English. Mm. Yeah, they could just be. A, they, they could just be a little yeah. James, in, a little James in the corner, you know, doing doing sign language in his fez. Yeah. Do you recall that they had the the big documentary where they re shot Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker with David Prowse? Do you remember they did that? So that they reshot him telling him he's his father with David Prowse as as opposed to you know, the actor they're going to do it. We could perhaps reenact Kez and Neelix breaking up. I think we could oh, do it. Oh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? But we could reenact it for the Voyager document. If we shoot it and send mm. it to them, I don't see how they could keep it out of the documentary. <laughs> I think we could do it. Oh, yeah. I yes, they posted, uh, posted uh, lots of photos, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Who plays Kess? Well, obviously, that's the most effeminate of us, which would be James. Um, next slide, please. There is no next slide. <laughs> End of feature, please. Let's talk more about how creepy it was Neelix going out with a three-year-old. <laughs> Glossing over, please. Uh, right, let's move on to our next feature. Uh, this is something we call Wish. I mean, presumably, we, we could learn from the uh, accompan education system. If you can be a fully-fledged adult, fully educated by the time you're three years old, well, what are we doing wrong in this country? Simple. I'd, I'd, blame, I'd have to blame the teachers myself, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if they spend a bit more time in work and a little less time on holiday, you know, things will get done. Yes. So last week I introduced the idea of parody uh, as it comes to the Star Trek franchise and that there are literally millions of parodies out there. Uh, this week I've selected one. I think the clip, Carl, I sent you was a little over two minutes, but let's cut it around the minute and a half mark uh, just at random because I think, quite frankly, that's enough. Roll VT. In the year 2345, the Federation of Planets opened a Starfleet Academy near Carnoustie in Scotland. Four <laughs> years later, its first graduates emerged to find themselves rewarded with the command of Starfleet's newest and most powerful vessel, the Ion Impulse-powered Aurora. Right, Ensign, he's what Vector 10. We'll open this big bastard up and see if it has shit up or shit away at us. Ned in, get your belt soon. <laughs> Look out, just wearing belt like a bunch of big poofters. <laughs> What? Don't let us go with the replicator. I'm starving. All right. As long as you bring us back, I'm going to Royal Game Soup and a couple of the side house. <laughs> Captain! What now? There are a wreck, big hoory, a spaceship coming the walls. us. You want to see the fast up the size of the thing? It's like a, you know, twice size is bigger than your skin. 
These graduates never backed away from conflict as they were fearless and highly trained. I tell you, I'm a real man, you're a bastard. Stick this in your clacker, but. What are you doing, you dafty? Well, I'm just saying I go on a holiday, can't I'm holiday, daft, can <laughs> Yeah, that yes. I, I, did you spot the continuity error in there? Uh, the, the major error. The captain had five pips on. Oh, I thought you went in the Nemesis uniform with all the other TNG ones. Sorry, there was a Nemesis uniform in with all the TNG ones. Oh, no, no, no. That, that, that was mere set dressing, dear fellow. <laughs> uh, so that's what would happen if the Scottish people had made Star Trek. I think that that's what they're suggesting to us. <laughs> And there speaks a proud Scotsman. <laughs> uh, and I thought that Simon Pegg had churned out the worst of Star Trek. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's more or less it for, for features and things this week. Um, uh, and, um, does anyone want to see the mail on freighter again? Oh, yes, yes. Please. As, can, everyone put their freight, can everyone put their freighter up? Oh. Now... We are going to ready, gentlemen. <laughs> so at Destination Star Trek London, if anyone wants to bring their mail on freighter, we'll be signing. <laughs> we'll sign your mail on freighter with a silver sharpie, if you'd like it signed. <laughs> I'll be having a cloak, cloaked one, cloaked mail on freighter. <laughs> As it goes around the U bend. Um, so going back, uh, we did say that we are having a bit of a meet up in a couple of weeks' time. If you are in the northwest or the Midlands and you wish to come up to the northwest for the day to <laughs> hang around in Manchester with us and do some bits and pieces, you are more than welcome to. Details will be posted in this show in the next couple of weeks. Uh, in case you want to be free, what date was that one? James, walking diary, what's the date, please? Hmm. You put it in. It's, you, you, you're one of these people that looks organised and has a diary. Hang on. Does this help? I didn't catch any of that. My internet is so bad. <laughs> I lost what you said. You, you haven't pixelated this week. James, when are you going, coming up to the north? Oh, I don't know. I haven't yet got approval from the in president, Mrs. Dillon. It's in September. Mm. Start of September. I think we had a date. And I'm awaiting her response to my permission application. It isn't this a bit like planning permission? You just start anyway and then get told off afterwards. Well, get retrospective planning permission. Mm. Absolutely. I've assessed the situation and I've <laughs> decided to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the James line to come into our group chat. Is that that Kirk line from uh, the search for Spock? The word, the word is no. I am therefore going anyway. <laughs> I, my friend, I've assessed the situation and I'm leaving. Don't be silly, Patrick. All your friends are my friends. I've considered that. And you can have them. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a look at this one. Have we heard anything about it, whether it's going ahead or not? I believe you're talking about Destination Star Trek. Um, going ahead. As far oh, as we know, oh. absolutely going ahead. Yep. Full steam ahead. Oh. We're supposed to be doing something or other there, aren't we? So uh, Dan, yeah. Dan's hosting a stage. Yeah. I'm not. Um, no, is, I'm not. Um, are you not? No. Oh. Shit, are we doing one? What? <laughs> What right, moving on. Uh, Larry Nemitrick is actually making progress on his documentary now on Wrath of Con. He hopes to have it released by 2022, uh, 2022 for the 40th anniversary. Um, Con of Wrath. Con of Wrath. I did wonder about Christoph. that because I put a little bit of money into his Kickstarter. Christoph, is this one that he's been making for the last couple of years? I imagine so. Um, he's a thoroughly nice chap, Larry. I like him. He is. He is. I've got something like a full £10 invested in that so that my name in tiny pixelated uh, scale will appear at the very end. Did you use your real name, or did you go for, like, a Simpsons <laughs> one? <laughs> did, you so put, I, did you put the name of your company in so you could claim it back as a taxable expense? <laughs> I bet you did. 
<laughs> and then said, last 10 years in the making, I would love to jump on board and ridicule him, but our pages documentary has been on the cards now for about three years, and I've done nothing nothing but written an intro script. To be fair, lockdown happened. But... Is this your pages documentary that's been going on since pages shot in 1845 or whatever it was? No, I only decided to make it, um, it was literally the summer before the last lockdown. I got in touch with some people who were really interested and really happy about doing it. And then, yeah, it just all knocked down everything happened. Fizzled. I'm, I'm trying to find enthusiasm to get back on with the project again now because the people I spoke to about Pages Bar um, remember it was such fondness. It's just it, it would be a crime not to do this documentary. It really would. Hmm. <sighs> James, express your fondness. Maybe we could shoot some B-roll for your Pages documentary on the Thursday before Destination Star Trek when we're all in London together. Yeah, well, it's the, the, the bar's flats now, but James could stand outside it with his G-spot and his plaque, you know. But it is all flat <laughs> now where it is, yeah. Yes. Well, we could go to the Marquis of Granby, which is around the corner. We did occasionally decamp from Pages there when Pages was being renovated. It'd be almost the same thing. Right. So I think that's more or less it for this week. So, uh... oh, boy, I wish I'd have been given warning. I just got mine. <laughs> Carl, we'll do this. We'll do this feature again in ten seconds. All right. Mine's not charged, though. That's the problem. <laughs> Can't hear a thing. Hello? 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 <laughs> I did it for you. There you go. Thank you. On three <laughs> things. One, two, three. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's a, my God, it's got a life of its own. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> and on that disappointment, it's time to end the show. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye-bye, Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs> Look after yourselves and each other. Hello, this is you. You've been watching a Let's Talk Track promotion. Production, it's us. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Don't forget to get out for our custom outfit. Any of the stunts you have witnessed in the TV show. Hero collector.